Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can write an application in .NET that prints Hello World in the console, but instead of writing it in C Sharp, F Sharp or VB.NET, we're going to write it directly using IEL code, which is the thing that all those languages actually compile into, and the CLR picks that up and it executes it. This sort of knowledge doesn't look useful and probably isn't to the majority of you, but it is being used heavily by a lot of things that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis, including mocking frameworks, things like and Hibernate used to use it, I don't know if it's using it anymore, where it would create a dynamic runtime type for the thing it's reading from the database. And it's really heavily used, but you just never see it. So I think it's useful to know it exists and understand how it works in case you ever need to do something with it. It's also a very nice way to speed up reflection usage in your application, but that's going a bit too advanced. So we're not going to look at that right now. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and this notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? Well, I have a simple uh, .NET 5 application that if I execute, would print Hello World in the console. You know, your, your usual boilerplate Hello World console app. And this application, if I take a look at the IL viewer um, in Rider, you'll see that it has some IL instructions. Say. An intermediate language is the language where C Sharp, F Sharp, and VB.NET will be compiled into and then executed by the CLR and optimized even further by the JIT compiler. And as you can see, I have effectively, well, here I have four instructions, uh, sorry, five instructions, NOP, LDSTR, call, NOP again, and return. However, if I change this into uh, release and rebuild it, you'll see that NOP goes away, mainly because the release version will actually optimize a lot of those instructions uh, since you're not going to be debugging them. And as you can see, what stays is LDSTR, uh, which is if I hover over it and see what it says, it says pushes a new object reference to a string literal stored in the metadata. This is very relevant to the string interning video I had uh, quite a few weeks ago. You can check that if you want more about the string interning in C-sharp and .NET. Then we have call, which just calls the method that we want. In this scenario, it is the system.console write line method with the string type parameter. And then we return, and that's it. So we're going to try to replicate that by emitting IEL code through C-sharp. So this is still C-sharp written, but we will be building it directly by writing the IEL code. And I'm going to show you how this works. Everything we need is basically built in C-sharp and .NET file, so you don't need to refer to any packages. So we will effectively be building a full assembly here because I want it to be externally compiled as well and show you how that works change that back to debug. So the first thing that any assembly needs is an assembly name. So I'm going to say assembly name equals new assembly name. And we have a name parameter and we're going to name that, I don't know, hello uh, world printer, something like that. And this will effectively be translated into the hello world printer .dll uh, eventually. And then we're going to need an assembly builder. And this is what will help us uh, build this assembly, build the methods, build the classes, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a class with a static method that we're going to refer to and then call. So assembly builder equals assembly builder dot uh, dyna define dynamic assembly. And then we're going to provide the name, assembly name, and then we're going to say that we want this to uh, be runnable. And that's it. And now that we have the assembly builder, we're going to start defining our module. So first we're going to have an assembly module equals assembly builder dot define dynamic module. It's the high level module. And we're going to name that hello world printer module. Here we go. And then using that module, we're going to create a type and then a method in that type. So we're going to say assembly module dot define type. And this type is effectively the class that we're going to use to print. And I'm going to uh, name that hello world, this class, and I want it to be a public class. I'm going to give it that type attribute. Um, and then I'm going to say type equals this, or actually assembly type equals this. And then in this assembly type, I can have uh, a method. So I'm going to say var uh, method. Is it method? I think it's method type, actually method builder, sorry, equals assembly type dot define and you can define all sorts of things you can define the method the nested type constructor event field anything for us we're going to define a method and that method will be just print to print the text and it's going to have two attributes it's going to be uh, first a public 
but also a static so we don't have to instantiate the class to print it we could if we wanted to uh, but we don't have to so with that we have a method builder and this is where the interesting part comes in because we're going to start defining the interactions like i said before we have an ldstr we have a call and we have a return these are the three instructions we're going to replicate and it's actually fairly easy the first thing you need to do for uh, ldstr is just say um, il equals method builder dot uh, get il generator to get the thing that will actually emit the il and now we can say il dot um, emit and actually there is an emit right line um, method here that will build exactly what we want i'm not going to use that i'm going to show you the the detailed version where we did manually just for fun and then we're going to say opcode um, ldstr so we can define the opcode that we want and then we're going to also define the type that we want so for us it is a hello world exclamation mark string so we define that one down two to go now the call is a bit more interesting because call implies that we have a, a method info to call and the method info that we want is console.write line of text so we need to somehow define that it's very easy you just have to say parameter because it has one string parameter and we need to find the right uh, method we're going to say parameter type equals a new type array of one and we're going to say parameter types zero equals type of string because it is a method that accepts an argument which is stream a parameter that's a string uh, and then we need to find the console class and not to do that you have to say var console type equals type dot get type and then we're going to define the uh, fully qualified name which is console sorry system.console comma system.console and we want it to actually uh, throw on exceptions so we have a console type here and now we need to get the method so method info equals console type dot get method and we could even say name of console dot write line uh, to make it just a bit more safe um, and then we're going to provide the parameter types here so it finds the right method because there's multiple ones that are right line you can have a boolean a number there's many of them and now we have the method info which means i can say il.emit and then call comma method info exclamation mark because it is not a null thing we know it will be there and then the last thing we need to emit is a return so emit ret and this will just return and we basically wrote our method using il now i can simply say uh, type equals assembly uh, type and actually those names are a bit uh, wrong this is not an assembly type it's rather a type builder and this is not exactly an assembly module it's more like uh, a module builder so i'm going to rename those and i'm going to say create type and now this will build this type during runtime that we defined here the whole the whole thing and we can even get an assembly out of it by doing assembly dot get assembly from the type which is not null and this of course does mean that since this is a type that you can actually just call using reflection we can say get method and we're going to get the method we just create the print method here we go and then we're going to say invoke and since it's a static we don't need to dis define any of those properties we can just say this and now if i just execute this assuming i did this right you will see hello world printed on the console so that's great we have what we want um, and if i just debug through that so you can actually see exactly step by step what's happening let's take a look at that we create the assembly name and then the builder and you can see that this looks like any other assembly you know with the fully uh, qualified name and then you have the type builder building um, a public uh, type hello world and then a method builder we're emitting that il ld string goes in parameters we get the right console type you can see it here this is the, the console in the system.console method info call return and we have our type here this hello world type that you can just call and do things with now there used to be a way to actually call a save on uh, the assembly builder and save it into disk and then refer to it microsoft remove it um, but there is actually a package called il pack that you can install and if you do that it has a way to write that 
into the disk again. Now there are a few bugs in that package, so I don't recommend using it, but I found a way around them so I can actually show you how this works. So I'm gonna use it for demonstration purposes, but ideally you're building types to use during runtime, not to build a DLL or an EXE. So what you can do is you can get a, a generator equals new assembly um, generator. This is coming from ILPack, and you can say, um, generate assembly bytes and if you generate assembly bytes from the assembly and let me just show you bytes equals this then you could do something like assembly.load and this will load this assembly in your runtime in the domain which means that then you can refer to it this is how um, like I said mock or other mocking frameworks use dynamic proxies to do that we are not gonna do that but I'm gonna have it anyway in case you wanna try it out uh, instead we're gonna use the method of the generator called generate assembly and this just accepts the assembly and also a path to build it so we're gonna call it what's the name here we go hello world printer dot dll and now there is a small uh, bug like i said in this method for dotnet 5 applications so i'm gonna step through the code to fix it by hacking it a little bit but let's generate that dll now so i'm gonna do that and I'm going to run all the way to the end. We have the generator, we have the type, we have the assembly. I'm going to step in that real quick and I'm going to try and fix that little issue. Should be in this uh, create reference assemblies method. It's referring to the uh, wrong collaborator here. So as you can see, it has uh, private.corelib. We don't want that. Uh, we want system.runtime instead. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say remove everything started with system.private and add the one starting or actually equals to system.runtime and by doing that I have the right assemblies now and I can just generate the DLL and now this built a DLL so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say remove this and return here and I'm going to add a reference to that DLL that I just created so I'm going to say add from and I'm going to select the library. So now it is referred. You can see it here. Hello world printer. This is the DLL we just created with uh, IL code. And I'm going to say hello world.print. That's it. And I'm going to just run it. And as you can see, hello world. This is not coming from the code below. This is coming from the thing we built through C Sharp with IL code. You can see the code here. And in fact, you can see even more details in the IL viewer. Uh, sorry, in the assembly viewer here, all the metadata, all the headers. It is a fully functional just assembly um, written in .NET using IL code. Now, like I said, this might not look like the most useful thing to know about, but I do think that knowing how you can do this can enable you to have ideas on other things, and that's mainly why I'm making this video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding!